Hey kiddos. Uh, okay, so we're still in module two, and as you can see from our objective list up here, we're starting to multiply and use uh, the standard algorithm in multiplication. Um, we're going to estimate to check when we get into division and um, and do multiplication to check our division too. So uh, connecting visual or area models and using the distributive property to uh, figure out what the partial products are when using the standard algorithm. Why do I have this number here and why is this number here and what do they represent? So the area models that we're going to be using will break up our products into parts. So we're going to try to make sense of that so that you know why you're putting these answers down here. And it's because the ones goes here, the tens goes here, the hundreds goes here, and we'll have little uh, helpful zeros to kind of help us remember yes you just have to keep bumping it out if this is if it goes on and you have thousands then you would have another zero here to hold that place so anyway we have lots of notes that we will take in class and then as you can see we digressed before and we were talking about well how do you multiply with decimals and you do not line them up no 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 uh, we'll get into this a little bit later you do not have to copy that now if you don't want to um, and then we are really not using this type of model, uh, but it does kind of help you see if you were to distribute out each place value position, what you would end up with and why it would go there. But anyway, that's uh, for a different day. So, oh yeah, and I wanted to, um, you know, we're always like finding errors and fixing things. And so in yesterday's video, uh, this, I had only done the 14 times eight and rookie error, forgot to add the zero or annex the zero. And so we fixed it. Thank you, Andrew, for finding the mistake. So I love it when you guys find mistakes because it helps us be more accurate. So in lesson five, we're only working on lesson five today, even though I had a big list for the objective, uh, we're going to draw an area model and then solve it using this standard algorithm. Like, yay, people have been waiting for this for a long time. And we're going to use arrows to match the partial products from the area model to the partial products of the algorithm. So um, let's start out by creating an, an area model and these are not like the ones before. So we're only going to have two boxes because we have two factors. And we're gonna do the first one on the top. So let's just take 34 and put the whole thing up there. But here's where we, here's where the magic happens. We have 21. We will break up 21 into two parts. Now I know that everybody's gonna jump right in and say, I wanna have 21, and I'm gonna say, don't do it. It's gonna be 20 and one. 20 and one. The one must be on top. The ones must be on top. If you do it with 20 and then one, it will be wrong. It's just wrong. That's not how we work it out in the standard algorithm. The ones place comes first. We are first multiplying with the one in the ones place here. That's why we have to have this written upwards, okay? So take whatever your second factor is and you're gonna stack it up, breaking it out by place value positions. That's the most important part of today if you wanna get this right. Now we're gonna take these factors and multiply them. So 34 times one is 34, easy peasy. Look at how it connects with the standard algorithm. One times four is four. One times three is three. So here we're taking one times 34. That's what this is, it's one times 34. And the partial product goes here. What does partial mean? It means part, part of the product. Part of the product that is going to be added up where we will get the full product down below. Now the next one, because we have this zero here, it is a little bit easier to multiply. So you can hold the zero, so zero times everything is zero, and then two times four is eight, and two times three is six, 
and you have 680. Now let's go over here and show what's happening. This ones place is done. We are multiplying with the tens place. Two is in the tens place. So we have zero ones. And it's really 20 that I'm multiplying right here. Okay, it's two tens times four ones. So when I get the eight, <clears throat> that should make perfect sense that I have 80. Yeah. So then when I have two tens times three tens, I should get six hundreds. So that's why these numbers have to live in this place. Okay, so that's why you have to line it up in this way so that you will get these that arrows that can go straight over. If your partial products are flipped and you've got crazy arrows, that is not the intent of the area model. Now you can add these together and you end up with your full product and you don't really have to do anything more with this it's just to show you the partial products and then you can add these and if you take the time you will fill it in up here and most of the time I forget to do that or I'm too busy uh, so as long as you circle your answer you're okay with that so just make sure that you recognize that the standard algorithm takes the ones place first multiplies across your other factor then the tens place multiply by all the factors so that's what the standard algorithm is all about. So it's lovely and a great time. What about if I have a three digit first number, first factor, 434, and my second factor has uh, two digits in it, 20 and one. How do you write them? You stack them up with the ones on the top, tens, then any hundreds, and so on because we need it to match this. The whole point is for the ones to be on top. So 434 times one is 434. So let's do that here. One times four, one times three, one times four. Okay, this is the ones, partial product, part of our total product. Then this one, okay, now I have a zero here, so I can just Hold that ones place with the zero, two tens, two times four, two times three, two times four. So your second partial product is 8,680. In the same way over here, we're done with this one. I have zero in the ones place because I'm working with two tens. I wanna start my product here, two times four, eight, two times three, six, two times four, eight. If you're working with tens, you must start in the tens. What if you didn't want to put this zero here? Could you just leave it blank? Of course you could, because the value is zero. Okay, second partial product, add them together, and off we go. Okay, so just be super careful with your lining up of your digits. I've seen kids have really smashed work and it tends to cause them errors when they add up their columns. So write big enough so that you're matching what the book has so that you have space in between your numbers. Now it says solve using the standard algorithm on the bottom, which means rewrite this problem and solve it in a vertical fashion. So we're going down. You do not have to use an area model because you want to practice using those partial products. So take your ones place, and these are all so nice because they're just little low numbers. So two times one, two times three, two times four. We don't have any regrouping today. I'm finished with the ones, and now I'm on to tens. One times one, one times three, one times four. So it's really like, 10 times one is 10, okay? And then a 10 times three tens would be three hundreds. And that's why it makes sense. That's why you can do this. And then you add them all together. And I should probably show you when I'm regrouping and then circle your answer. Easy peasy. So today is like a celebration day. We've been working so hard on all these complicated things and finally we're doing something that makes sense. 
Three times three, this is three ones times three ones is nine ones. And then three ones times two tens is 60, okay? Three times one is three, and this is the hundreds, so that's why this is the hundreds. I'm finished with the ones place, so I can hold it with a zero. Now I'm on the tens, two times three is six, two times two is four, two times one is two. Add your partial products. This is the ones place, this is the tens place. Add them together. And we get 2,829 for our final answer. 312 times 32. Multiply the ones, two times two. Two ones times 110. Two times one is two, but it's in the tens place. So you probably never thought about this before, but this is all about place value. It is all about place value. Done with that one, move on. Three times two, six. Three times one, three. Three times three, nine. This is when knowing your facts is key. There you go, first page is done. How easy is this activity today? And all we have left are two word problems. So um, read carefully is my key uh, for you. Circle and identify any important numbers. Betty saves $161 a month. She saves $141 less each month than Jack. Okay, so we're comparing her amount to Jack. How much will Jack save in two years? Holy moly, we've got months, we've got years, we've got Betty's amount, we've got Jack's amount. Let's make a tape diagram to help us um, sort out the difference here. Betty saves $161 a month. But she saves $141 less than Jack. $141, even at the $161, that is $141 less than Jack. Jack saves more, okay? So we need to figure out how much Jack saves. So you're going to do step one and combine this these two amounts to see how much Jack saves per month label it. Now we know how much Jack saves per month. But that's not the answer to the question. How much will Jack save in two years? Now you have to know how many months are in a year and then double that. So 12 months are in a year, so 24 months are in two years. So take your $302 and multiply it by the 24 months in all those uh, those two years. Four times two is eight. Four times zero is zero, hold that spot. Four times three is 12. Finished with the ones place, move on to the tens. Two times two is four, two times zero is zero, and then two times three is six. Line up your digits carefully, thinking about place value. Add, and it's so, easy. Now this is all in dollars. There are no cents. There is no decimal. And then you need to label your final answer. Jack will save $7,248 in two years. There you go. And finally, Farmer Brown. Good old Farmer Brown. Feeds 12 and 1 tenths kilograms of alfalfa to each of his two horses daily. To each. That's really important. Or it could be, depending on what they ask us. How many kilograms of, al al uh, bleh, of alfalfa will all his horses have eaten after 21 days? Draw an area model to solve. So this is one where uh, you can break it out. And also, because we have a decimal value, I'll kind of show you how you can do that. Um, if I have 12 and 1 tenth kilogram and I have two horses, then I need to know how much 
alfalfa. That's just like mental math. It's pretty easy. Uh, for two horses daily. Okay, so here we have 24 and 2 tenths kilograms for two horses each day. So that's our daily amount. Um, how many how many kilograms will all of his horses have eaten after 21 days? So I need to take my all, that's just for the two, times 21 days. And so um, set it up with the standard algorithm, but also we're going to draw an area model. And you might say, oh, but I haven't worked with a decimal yet, so we'll talk about that. And it's still basic multiplication, one times two, one times four, one times two. Hold this place, we're done with that. Two times two is four, two times four is eight, two times two is four. Add those up, eight, nine, 10. So you end up with this five, zero, eight, two. But what about this? Well, remember, this is 242 tenths. Okay, times ones. So your answer should be in tenths, which means you need to put the decimal here. Okay, this is kilograms. So this is how you multiply with a decimal. Consider the unit value before you put your decimal in as your final answer. So let's take it apart and make an area model. Um, let's do 20 with four and then two tenths and line this up just so. Sorry, crooked. And then we're multiplying by 21. Don't forget, stack it up this way so that the ones place will be on top. So with the 242, or what exactly is it? It's 20, then four, and it's two tenths, okay? So this is really like 24.2, but I'm not gonna bother with that there. We'll talk about why later in another lesson. Then we have our 400, and we would combine that with 80, but what about the tenths? Okay, so it's 20 times 2 tenths. Okay, so we're going to have 4 tenths. Then uh, if you have your 24 and 2 tenths, you tie it over here. 484 and 0 tenths. And that's what that would come out to be. And you have your 508 and 2 tenths. Sorry, it's kind of on that bump there. But anyway, that is how you can multiply with decimals. Really in the standard algorithm, it's so easy. We'll keep talking about this really soon. But uh, that's it for today, and we'll be working on uh, Lesson 5 for homework. See you soon.